Yeah. Looks amazing. Damn, this is so good. Looks so good. And those are his core variations from the same position. Every time I roll with him, I can see he gets better, better, and better. Bigger and bigger too. But at the same time, I get bigger too because I've been drinking a lot of beer. Hello guys! Today I'm here with Nate Lapinski. How are you? Doing good. So today we are gonna go train at the academy called Parestra Koyua. Parestra is one of the biggest teams in Japan. Uh, we are gonna go there and train. But before that, we are gonna get some Japanese food. When it comes to Japanese food, sushi, okonomiyaki, takoyaki, and then what? Ramen. Ramen, right? So today, we are gonna get some ramen. And this ramen shop has got one of the most good reviews in Google Maps. So I think this is gonna be good. This is my first time going there, but it's gonna be good. Then this is cool. The name of this restaurant is called Oku Window and it says Akinaichu. That means they are open right now. This is the menu. What's cool about this ramen shop is all the ramen are fish based and there are eight types of fish and you can pick one fish to be the base for the soup of the ramen. One of them is not fish, one of them is mushroom. That's what we got, like mushroom based uh, ramen. Uh, what I got is, it's called sama in Japanese but uh, I don't know how to say it in English, let me look it up. That's called, uh, the, the ramen that I got is called Pacific Sari, which is a kind of fish, but I don't know what that is. Plus he doesn't know what that is too, so I don't know if it's uh, right English. I think it's very like Japanese style fish, I guess. But that's what I got. Better. Hey, do you, do you usually eat ramen? I do, but it's been a long time. Yeah, um, there's some good shops in this area too, like this one, I and mean, then there's some. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. It's not too hard to find good ramen, right? Right, so that's the thing. So there are a lot of ramen shops around here. So the competition is very big. If you have a ramen shop in one of those areas, your ramen has to be really, really good. Otherwise, you're, you're gonna go run out of business. Mm. Looks amazing. Damn, this is so good. Oh, this looks so this good. This looks really, really good. How does it smell? Amazing. Here's amazing. the thing. I had lunch at work before coming here, okay. so I wasn't hungry. I am now hungry. <laughs> this is well, so I, good. It's my first time to see a ramen with a side plate, with kind of like a bacon, with the uh, mushrooms. What is this called? Chashu? I, I think it's chashu. Chashu, right. And the things next to it is uh, mushrooms, right? Right, yeah. In Japan, you have to take off your hat before you eat. That's, uh, that's how you can show the politeness. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu is like, let's start, right? Let's eat it. They actually opened this ramen shop a year ago. And what's amazing about this ramen shop is, like I said, there are eight types of fish, right? And you can pick one fish to be a base. And what they do is they grill, grill the type of fish that you chose over the charcoal. And then they'll make that into a paste. And that's gonna be the base of the soup. Um, and those eight types of fish are mackerel, squid, pacific sauri, sardine, salmon, horse mackerel, chestnut, and mushrooms. The la actually, the last two are not fish, but those are very rare to be the base for the soup too. That sounds very interesting, so I'm definitely gonna try them out next time I come here. The soup was not too salty or too fatty, that was the perfect amount of salt in it and noodles were not too thick, not too thin and the noodle absorbed a lot of taste and umami from the soup. As soon as I started eating this, I really couldn't stop. That was definitely one of the best ramen that I've ever had in my life. No exaggeration, that was really good. So I'm supposed to put this radish in this ramen and then how about this? It looks like onion. This is onion? Make it like, yeah, onion. I'm gonna put these onions in here. How do you get the broth so smooth? Yeah. It, like, it's a mixture of things, right? Right, right, But right. it tastes like one thing. Yeah. What's the best thing to eat before jujitsu? Definitely no ramen. 
The last time it was burgers. <laughs> the last time we had a burger and we went oh, to that was, BGJ. That, that was really that was bad. not good. <laughs> well, the burgers were delicious. That's true. That's but true. During training, you could just taste the burger the entire time. <laughs> well, finish soup because you know it's just not good for you, like in terms of health. But this one is so good that I couldn't help finishing all. So it's so good. I'll definitely come back here. That was so good. That was really good. It was really, really good. Yeah. You all right? This is my, like, so good pose. This pose. is the so good pose. Let me get this in the full frame <laughs> When I frame, eat something then. so good, <laughs> it look like this. You just, you have to find a thing and <laughs> lean on thing it for a while. To do this so good pose. Okay. Every time I'm like this, that means I had a really good this food. <laughs> but seriously, that ramen is so good. Though. That was really good. That makes sense that Google map has got a lot of views that ramen shop. That was so good. That really makes sense. It's hard to get good reviews. Yeah, in Japan, it's yeah. very hard to get the good review because some <laughs> Japanese people are so strict <laughs> about reviews. So if you look at the, all the comments for reviews in like some restaurants, it says, hey, this place was so good. Food was amazing. The staff members are really amazing. Atmosphere was perfect. The restroom was clean. And then they get like three stars yeah. out of five. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that is. Everything it's very, was perfect, yeah. three stars. <laughs> Everything yeah. is perfect. Couldn't That's why better. it's three Four stars. stars. Yeah. Okay, right now we are gonna kill some time and we are about to go training afterwards. Yes. All right, we arrived at Koyua Station. We are gonna go to Paraestra Koyua, right? Paraestra is one of the biggest teams in Japan. Harupideon, Paraestra, they are two biggest teams in Japan. And this academy is called Paraestra Koyua. Koyua is the name of the place. Actually, I used to train at Paraestra Koyua for a year when I came back to Japan from Seattle. And here's what Koyua is. Check this out. This is like a very old traditional style Japanese city. Check this out, this like ramen shop. Looks like they are from like 200 years ago. You know? It's yeah. super cool, right? It is very the city. cool. It's like going back in time. Yeah, exactly. Check out this sign too. It's got like a piano. Or the Yamaha. Piano class here. But look at this old sign. Yeah. Hey, this it's uh, adult cool. piano lessons, right? Yeah. Hey. The Academy Palestra Koyua has got a lot of MMA fighters and Jiu Jitsu fighters. So in Japan, a lot of uh, academies that got Jiu Jitsu classes usually have MMA classes too. And their MMA is really high level too. They have one super famous champion, uh, Yutaka Saito too. He competes in Rising and Shuto. Check out this <laughs> old traditional Japanese style bicycle. Do you, uh, do you get nervous when you go train somewhere new? So that's the thing I'm working on the most is not getting nervous doing it. Because uh, it's like a tournament, right? You don't, you're right, right, right. You, you kind of get competitive, right? I, I just, I find I do my best when I'm calm. Ah, uh, I see. If but I, the thing is that he's going to compete next week. So he kind of wants to put himself in uncomfortable zone yeah. by going to another academy so that he can get a little nervous intentionally. That's important, right? It's important, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, if you train around every day, yeah. you might get burned out, right? Because you kind of put yourself yeah. a little in uncomfortable position a little too often. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, you know, before you compete or once in a while, yeah. it's really good to train somewhere else. Because if you get yourself uncomfortable, like by going to a lot of other academies, you kind of get like a, they get body and your mind are going to go to the state where your mind and body are going to go when you compete. Right. So when you actually compete, your mind is going to actually recognize it. Your mind is going to be like, oh, I've been here before. Right. Right? And I was going to say, even if you don't compete, like, it's still good to see how your jiu-jitsu does against people who you've never rolled with. You know? Exactly. Because exactly. everyone at the academy knows I'm going to try to scissor sweep them. Right. Hopefully I can get one tonight. We'll see. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Let's see. Or I'm just going to tell everyone, everyone. That he's gonna do this week. Uh, they don't need any more help, man. <laughs> Check this out. It's called Paraestra Koiwa. Damn. 
see there's a kids class going on and that guy is a professor the guy in the red he's a professor leg lock master and this guy is Yutaka Saito mm. he's the champ ah, for Shuto right. okay. yeah. he right. looks like a badass right I would not so, want to at least you can tell by his ears oh that's true Boy. do you have the ears high no, ears? I can't, I've been training Jiu Jitsu around 10 years or even more, uh -huh. but I still don't have a Kali Flower ear. This is like my ear, I think, but I kind of wanted to get it when I started it. So I kept scratching my ear with the pillow, but it never worked. Let's get in. Okay, I look like a super saiyan. I'm going to take it off. But um, this is Paraestra Koyua, and he's the owner of Paraestra Koyua. He's the Lake Lock Master. <laughs> and I used to train here for a year and he really took care of me. He taught me a lot of good techniques and thank you so much for having me. Konnichiwa. Today he's gonna teach a class and I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna show you guys his secret techniques later on. <laughs> and then this is the Professor Ochi's class. I'm gonna translate his instruction into English. From spider guard, you are gonna switch to single leg spider guard with the right shin on the top of his belly. From here, if I try to sweep towards my left, the top person is gonna step forward with the right foot to stabilize, so you really cannot complete the sweep. Then what should you do from here? What you wanna do is to hug his left ankle but with the overhook, not from the underhook. Because if you do the underhook, sometimes the top person can backstep. And then you're gonna switch to double leg X guard. But when you do double leg X guard, make sure your right knee is pointing towards the right side. Then you're gonna pass the top person's right sleeve on his right wrist from your left hand to your right hand. Then your left hand is gonna grab the collar again, and then you're gonna keep pulling the collar down, and you'll come up on top. This is a really good technique. A spider guard and double leg X guard, single leg X guard, those are all intertwined. So when you have a hard time finishing the sweep from spider guard, you always have the option to go for an X guard. And once you pass the sleeve to your right hand, there is no way for the top person to use the hand to post on the mask to stabilize. So you have a high possibility to finish the sweep. This time, the top person broke the grip, just like this. Then you cannot finish the sweep towards your left side, right? Then you, what you have to do is to drop your left leg down on the mat, so that ends up behind the top person's right ankle. And then you're gonna open his legs. Then he will get unbalanced, right? But as soon as he goes to the mat, you gotta keep the right foot on his right thigh, or he will be able to come up on top again. And from here, you are going to use your left foot to push his left hip. Then you are going to have a tight ankle lock. And those are his core variations from the same position. You can go for this armbar with the choke at the same time. Or you can go for an uh, inverted and end up with the knee bar. Or you can go for an inverted and go for a back right. From here, you can switch to reverse double leg X guard, unbalance him, come up on top with the leg drag. Oy. うん。この打ち込みの時間をやっぱりやって、で、講師をちゃんと決めて、で、一連の流れをやっても一緒反復なしをやってもいいし、これがやっぱ上達、ちょっとコツかなと。あと自分の体にやっぱり、あの、僕
he has to drop the hips down. That's gonna automatically get the head high up, just like he did right now. And then, once you get the head high, you can clear the head out of the triangle. And he did it, but that's when the bottom person went for the omoplata. But Nate was doing a very great job of lifting the hips up. There are like 20 people at the academy, there are a lot of people, that's really awesome. And here's me rolling with Ryuwon Iju. He's actually a professional MMA fighter and he's been winning all the BJJ tournaments too. Every time I roll with him, I can see he gets better, better and better. Bigger and bigger too. But at the same time, I get bigger too because I've been drinking a lot of beer. And here's me trying to finish a guard pass. He got the Derahiba guard. I constantly break his grip on my collar. That's the key. From their hibar guard, you always have to break the grip there. And once you break the grip, then you try to get out of their hibar guard. That's what I did and went for the leg drag here, but he did a very great job of having heavy hips here. Tried to dro drop the hips down. So I switched to X pass here, but he regained the guard. And here's my butt. Make sure to enjoy watching my butt. Just kidding. From his close guard, I opened the guard and then I broke the grip and I went for the knee slice. Boom. That's why when you play a bottom there, Hebra guard, instead of cupping the ankles, you want to grab the gi material. And here's Rion trying to shrimp out. That's the moment I went for the back take and I whispered him, Good try, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's really getting better. Here, his defense was so good that I had to switch to armbar, but that's the moment he came up on top. He smashed my armbar. I tried to get the leg out and I switched to X guard here. Now, as soon as I got the X guard, I was gonna do old senses special, the technique he taught today, but he was doing a very great job of backstepping, so I switched back to double leg X guard, came up on top, tried to take a back position. And then the time run now. Now here is Nate Lapinski versus Ryuon Iju. As soon as Nate Paul Ryuon tried to go for a guard pass, he was gonna go for a knee slice. Nate was defending it. And here Ryuon is keeping his right hand so that Nate won't be able to establish the grip on the collar. Nate went for a very good ankle pick, but Ryuon defended it. And also, he went for the sweep, but Ryuon stabilized at the end and stood back up. He went for a knee flight pass here. Nate defended it with the half guard. And they go back and forth like that. That was a really good sparring session. And then I had an honor to roll with this brown belt guy. He was really strong too. I got the lasso guard. He tried to back away so that I can initiate the sweep. So I switched to omoplata position. I've been using this omoplata entry a lot. He tried to back away, so I back roll to finish the sweep. Came up on top and he shrimped out. I went for the guillotine, but he was really strong. And eventually he tried to come up on top. We ended up bumping the wall. And this is Rion showing his special card pass. This technique is actually useful and also looks good on Instagram. So I'm gonna practice it for my Instagram, I guess. So he's saying you're gonna first fake the knee slice with the regular knee slice grips just like this. But as soon as you do it, usually the bottom person tries to come back to the center like this. And you're gonna expect that. And that's the moment you're gonna bring the left knee back in to the center and then at the same time, you're gonna use this left hand to hug his neck to get the cross face, and then you back step. Thank you so much for the class or everything. That was really fun. A lot of good, good techniques. I wanna ask him some questions in Japanese. Jujutsu ga tsuyoku naru. 
コツっていうのは一言じゃ言えないと思うんですけどそうですね、はい、でも好きになることじゃないですか柔術をやっぱり好きであればどんなきつい練習でも耐えれますし、はいはいはいうん、まずは一番大切なことっていうのは柔術が好きになること,になること、はい、それであとは継続して練習をすることだと思います、ね、怪我をしてもどんなことがあっても週一でもいいから、はい、とりあえずつなげ続けると、はい、怪我をしていても例えば見取り稽古をするとか、はいはい、あのいろんな試合の映像を見るとか、はい、そういうことはできますのであと痛めてないところのトレーニングができますので、はい、もう諦めないでもうやっぱ少しでも長く続けた先にあるのがあのいろいろな帯であって最終的に黒帯までたどり着くと思いますわかりました本日は本当にありがとうございましたこちらこそありがとうございましたよろしくお願いいたしますよろしくお願いします Thank you so much for watching. Oss. Awesome. Awesome.